doesn't say it's going uh, completely issue free. So we've drilled holes in most of the uh, pieces of steel and then I'm coming to tap for the bolts to connect these two sections together. Now I do have a tap and die set. So over here, it's a cheap one, it's the Draper, oh it's the silver line set from Tool Station. And I've actually only used it once. Unfortunately, it's all made out of Mickey Mouse pig iron. So uh, it's not really up to the job for cutting brand new threads. It'll be all right for tapping sort of chowdered up threads, but not really for cutting brand spanking new ones. So what I'm gonna do instead is have a Kiroos across to Tool Station again. I know I went last night, uh, but they've got some HSS taps in there. Not the ones I wanted. I mean, I think you should really actually spend the money and buy a decent tap and die set. I've seen a set for 140 quid, which I might punt for if I do much more of this stuff. But we'll see how we get on with this one from, uh, it's from Screwfix actually. Uh, but they reckon it's a bit better. I've looked at the reviews. They said they've tapped into uh, steel with them. So it should be all right, even stainless steel. So it should be all right. And then I also, I'm missing a few drill bits. I like to use the cobalt drill bits. So I've got an example of one. No, I haven't, it's over here. Here we are. Yeah, I like to use the cobalt drill bits. This is the bad boys here. And uh, you can actually, these will last you a long, long time if you don't snap them because I just regrind them on the tips. And provided you learn how to sharpen your drill bits properly, they will last you all the way down till basically there's that much drill bit left, like a pencil almost. So these drill bits are Sort of, some of them are in the region of £10 per bit, which is a lot of money, but like I say, use them properly, they'll last you years and years. So I'm going to go across and I'm spending 40 quid on a cobalt drill bit set from, uh, from Tool Station as well, as picking up a load of nuts to match all the set screws and bolts that I picked up yesterday, because I think I'm going to need a few. So I haven't spent a lot of money, most of the money's gone on, uh, gone on the tap and die and the drill bits, uh, the bolts are like a pack of a hundred for something like two pound, you can't go wrong. So we'll go and pick that up and hopefully we'll make a bit more pro progress on this project because I want to do it right, you know. This is the third time I've messed around with this table saw fence, so I want it to work properly. And I'm also going to pick up some casters, I'm hoping that we can kind of have uh, you know, cantilevered adjustable casters that I can fold away when not in use, then drop them down to lift the table up to move it. We'll see. Anyway, I'm going to cruise over there. I'm not going to take the camera, so I'll be back in a flash. And just like that, we are back. This is a lovely, hella, hella good tool index, drill bit index. So everything from one mil right up to 10 mil in half mil increments. That should allow us to create the right size hole for tapping. So I wasn't sure which to get. These were about eight quid. Look a bit ropey, but at least we've got an M8 tap in there. Should I bugger the one up in this? I think this was more close to uh, probably 20 quid. Not too expensive, I can't remember now. Uh, but the steel on this one looks a little bit better than the steel on that cheap one and the steel on the uh, on the silver line one that I've got. I mean, let's face it, silver line tools. The only decent thing that silver line really do is uh, cheap tape measures. And they don't last all that long, to be fair. Oh, well, that's a shame. I'm having to peel off the index to get to the tool, because it doesn't have a label on it. Never mind. 
We'll give it a whirl. We'll see. I'm only after the dies, really. It's probably worth me investing in a proper die. Probably 10, 15 quid for a proper M8 die. We'll see. Anyway, let's get some of these holes tapped now that we're back on it. Well, a quick experiment has uh, given me the conclusion that, yes, the 7mm hole and the cheap tap seems to have done the job on that. I'm pretty pleased. It seems to be good enough. So, that's taken an M8 bolt in there nicely. I didn't get the hole straight. I don't know if you can see down there. But uh, it's not too much of an issue clamping these pieces of steel together. Lovely, right. Drop this down here, get the uh, drill out and whiz down here and tap all these friggin' holes. Now this section throws me a little bit, but I've bent this piece of steel to sit onto the plate like such and then we're going to press this down onto there where I've drilled these holes and weld that section on and that's created a type of spring which should give us some pressure against the fence when we apply the lever. So I've moved a little bit further down the road with this project and uh, I thought I'd just have a quick recap before we go any further. So I've made basically a T-square out of some box section and the piece of angle that we was making to slot into this uh, rail on the front. That looks A-OK. -okay. And then we've made these little brackets here which sort of have a hole drilled in there and a big hole drilled in there. So we can bolt these to the to the uh, two by one angle, uh, box section should I say, and then this can go, the threaded bar can go through the middle. So that's what these are. These are threaded bar mounts. So we're just gonna tap and drill some holes for these, get them mounted on.
the day often escapes me. So we've got almost all of the T-square finished now. We've got the spring plate screwed on, which is here. You can just about make that out. So that's spring loaded with these four bolts. And then I've just cut one of these large nuts that will mesh onto the threaded bar. Uh, I've stripped it down to get rid of the flange on there and I've cut it in half in order to mesh against that threaded rod. I'm just waiting for them to cool down and then I'm going to clamp them on and weld them on. Gemma's here though, so time is a ticking. What exactly are you doing, Hab? And there we go, I've got to pack up because I'm being told off. I've almost got it done as you can see, I'm pretty chuffed. It took a bit longer than I thought but let's get this one right, I'm not building a fourth one, I'm sick to death of building them. Made one mistake, and uh, well two really, one is a mistake, the other one is uh, a little issue I've got to solve. So first mistake. I've welded that side. Well, if I'm pushing timber down there, that's a no-no, so I'm going to have to grind that weld back out. But that side and underneath should be enough, and once I've ground that out, I'm guessing I should be all right. The other option is I could clamp a piece of perfectly straight timber to this edge of the uh, timber, uh, of the steel, giving me a bit more height and then still a flat surface and I'll be able to get a bit closer to the blade as well then so I might do that and then I don't have to grind that out and secondly where the mechanism engages just in here doesn't really come back very far if you look at that so I'm gonna have to put some type of spring in here to try and push that mechanism back further but it meshes nicely and once it's once it's engaged it does not I mean it does not the old table's giving a does not move so I'm really chuffed we'll get that up and running tomorrow and then we'll probably start project storage drawers is that right? I can't remember Anyway, I've had a good day, and uh, well, it is 10 to 7, so I better go and edit the vlog. So, let's wrap up, folks, and uh, well, I'll see you freaking tomorrow. <laughs>